Good morning, good morning, Vision Church. Happy Easter. Come on. You know, in the Old Testament where the sun stopped and the sun went backwards on the step, I felt like that this morning with the time going backwards. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, if you could, let's rise to your feet and celebrate this amazing day. How many of you had an opportunity to go to the Florida Theater Good Friday service? Yes, what an amazing event of collaboration of churches. You know, this week I'm always torn. I'm always so thankful for the cross and what Jesus did on the cross. But, you know, the part of that process of walking through this week of knowing what Jesus did for us, that he died, that God sent his one and only son to this earth to die for us, fully God, fully man. You know, my heart tears for a man that would do that, like God loves us so much, each and every one of us, that he would just take his one and only son and let him be tortured on this earth. But come on, he is risen. Come on, come on, repeat it after me. He is risen. He is risen. Come on. So God, we're so thankful that Jesus took on the crown of thorns, the blood that was shed. He took on the mockery. He took on the shame. He took on the guilt. He took on the pain. He took on everything in this world that we struggle with. He took it. He took the lashes on his back. He took the mockery. He took the spit. He took all those things. He even took on death itself. And he said it was finished. Come on, I'm so thankful that today, three days later, that Jesus took death into that tomb. He took it there and he left it there forever. He condemned sin on this earth. And on that third day, that tomb rolled away. I'm so thankful for the tomb that rolled away. I'm thankful for those two angels that stood at his feet. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit entered Jesus' human body and resurrected Jesus. We celebrate you today, Jesus. We celebrate you today, Jesus. We celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. We thank you, Jesus, that you're seated on high with the Heavenly Father. We thank you, Jesus, that you took us, you took on every bit of darkness in this world and you placed it in yourself and you crucified it. And we thank you, Jesus, that you resurrected life in us. I thank you, God, that we can celebrate these baptisms today, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that we were buried and resurrected in you. We thank you that you took us from darkness into the glorious light. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So we fix our eyes on you, Jesus. We come here in worship because of you, Jesus. We come and worship together because we know that we can't do this life on our own. We need a Savior. So come, we worship you, Jesus. Church, just fix your eyes on Jesus right now. The resurrected Jesus, the spotless Lamb, the glorified body, perfect and holy. Just praise Him. Praise Him because you're in Him. We're seated in Jesus, in the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. So we worship you today, Lord. We fix our eyes on you, Jesus. We love you and we thank you. We praise you. Let's worship him. Come on, clap your hands like this. Let's praise him. Hey, hey, aren't you glad he's alive? He is risen. Come on, let's clap our hands. Let everything, Let everything that, has that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything, Let everything that, has that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll praise in the valley. I'll praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure, and I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. I'll praise when surrounded.
They wept, the morning sun was dead, the Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, His blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon Him. One final breath he gave as heaven looked away. 
the Son of God was laid in the darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged, the power of hell forever broken. overcome and we sing hallelujah and we sing hallelujah and we sing hallelujah the lamb has overcome
And now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King, He is overcome. He is overcome. He Death. 
Christ. went out when death had claimed its victory the king of love had given up his life the darkest day in history there on the cross they made for sinners for every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn what sacrifice was made as the heavens roared? All hail King Jesus! All hail the Lord of heaven and earth! All hail King
Give Jesus a mighty shout. You believe it. Your heart's rejoicing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Just take a moment to receive the presence of the Lord. You know, this morning, we're celebrating the greatest victory. As believers, the greatest victory that's ever been won 2,000 years ago. The Bible says not only was he crucified for our sins, not only was he buried, but the Bible says three days le later that the, that the grave couldn't hold him. Death could not keep him. And Jesus Christ was risen. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and say, Christ has been risen. Turn to somebody else and say, Jesus is alive. It's a celebration. This is, a, this is one of the greatest celebrations that we celebrate as believers. Hallelujah. I want to invite uh, our people that are getting baptized today. Come on, let's welcome them. Let's welcome them. We make a big deal about baptism here at Vision Church. We make sure this is a celebration. These are, this is people going from death to life. Not only are we celebrating it, we get to witness it. People that have been in darkness for a long time, they are going into the kingdom of light. And we're celebrating that today. As you guys know, the waters of baptism, they represent the burial. Today, they're getting buried for their old life. They're getting united. The Bible says this, they are united with Christ in his burial, in his death. And so just for, before you get in the water, I want to just say a few words uh, towards everyone that came out. And I want to set your heart to receive everything that the Lord has for you. You know, we truly believe as a church that uh, this is not just a symbol. It's not just a, a thing that we do traditionally. There's something that happens in these waters of baptism. It's a spiritual transaction. The Bible calls it, it says that when they get in, when you're connected and united in the burial and the death of Christ, you're going to be united in the resurrection of Christ. This is why it's a big deal. The Bible says this. In 1 Peter 3.21 it says, And this water is a picture of baptism, which now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Colossians 2.21 and those that are getting baptized, if you could just look at me just for a second. Colossians 2.21 says, You will be bur buried this morning, have b having been buried with Him in baptism, in which you were also raised with Him through your faith in the working of God, who raised Him from the dead. You will also die and be resurrected this morning. Romans chapter 6, uh, verses 3 to 5, it says, Oh, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into His death? We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death in order that Jesus, just as Christ, was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Everybody say, new life. For we have been united with Him in a death like His. We will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like this hallelujah today I want to remind you that baptism there's four things that we believe about baptism no, number one is that we're following the example that Jesus uh, showed us and he says go and teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit 
They're also today, they're declaring publicly what the Lord already did inwardly. The third thing is they're stepping into a covenant with Jesus Christ. They're stepping into the covenant with Jesus Christ. The covenant, listen, is the highest form of relationship that one could ever make. And today we're making it with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. And the last thing is you're being baptized into his death. And you're going to be resurrected into the newness of life. And so this week as we were talking to every person that's getting baptized, there's a spiritual battle that happens, especially before baptism. And uh, many people don't talk about it, but can I tell you that the battle is real. The battle is real. And so as we are uh, witnessing these five people coming into the water today to get baptized, I want you to begin to just pray in the spirit as well. We're going to celebrate together, but I want you to pray for them. And I want you just to, the Bible says they're getting baptized into Christ and into the body of Christ, which is the church. And so today, five more people are getting added through the waters of baptism to the church. Come on, can we give God glory for that? Hallelujah. Well, are you guys ready? Are we ready to witness it? Hallelujah. I could just get a microphone. Jenna, can I just ask you a question? Why are you getting baptized today? I want to be in the light and out of the dark and live the life I was intended to live. Amen. 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 Jenna, do you renounce sin, Satan, and the ways of the world? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died on the cross for your sins? Yes. Because of your faith and confession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. of Jesus. We break off every stronghold right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they are cut off from the world. She is cut off from the world. She's stepping into the newness of life in Christ Jesus, so I bless her. I bless you, Jenna. In the name of Jesus, I break every bondage of the enemy over your life right now. Every bondage of the enemy, every bondage of darkness right now in Jesus' mighty name, and I declare newness of life, newness of life, in Jesus' name, Lord, baptize her in your precious Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's celebrate. David, can I ask you, why are you getting baptized today? Well, I, I was atheist for a long time, and um, I think we can all agree every time we hit rock bottom or in our darkest hour, we all, we all turn to God, and uh, He's answered every single prayer. And you hear about people making deals with the devil, but I can't think of a, any bigger honor than making a covenant with God. So that's what we're doing today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David, do you renounce the sin, the world, and Satan? Yes, I do. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins? Absolutely. Do you pledge your full allegiance to Christ? Forever. Because of your confession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Why are you getting baptized today? Because God has been so good to me. He's delivered me. He's delivered me from depression, suicidal thoughts. He's filled me with the love that I've not been able to get anywhere else. Hallelujah. 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 Son of God, that He died on the cross for your sins. Yes, I do. And you renounce the ways of the world, the ways of sin, and, and the ways of Satan. Yes, I do. Based on your confession, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right now, in Jesus' name, I break off every bondage right now in Jesus' mighty name. Every bondage be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Fill her with your spirit, O oh God. Fill her with your spirit, O oh God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, begin to pray for her right now, church. Stretch your hands, pray for them. Hallelujah. I suffered with depression and anxiety, and just last year, I wanted to kill myself. And God gave me a new chance to have a new life, and I don't, those strongholds don't have a control over my life no more. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give Jesus praise. Church, I just want to ask you to continue to pray right now as they're getting in the water. There's something that's happening. Come on, they're getting cut off from the ways of the world. Shannon, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Do you renounce the ways of the world, the ways of sin, and the ways of Satan? Yes. Based on your confession, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus mighty name Right now we break every bondage of the enemy In the mighty name of Jesus And we declare life Your spirit To fill her in Jesus mighty name Be filled in the Holy Spirit In the mighty name of Jesus Anxiety has to go Depression has to go We break off every bondage of the enemy In Jesus mighty name Thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
How come you're getting baptized today? Um, because I could no longer consider myself an honest person if I didn't admit that Jesus was the Christ, that he's the light that I met when I died, the light we all meet when we die, that you do not want to get through that life review without him, that you can the grace is the only way. No one is righteous enough, not a single person. I promise you that. And that he's the only one in any pantheon that could be worthy of called God. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Liz, do you believe that Jesus is Lord? Absolutely. Do you believe that He died on the cross for your sins? Absolutely. Do you renounce the ways of the world, the ways of sin, and the ways of Satan? Absolutely, 100%. Based on your confession, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name right now, we break the bondage of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. We break the bondage of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we break the bondage of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Every bondage be broken in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, church, keep praying. Stretch your hands and pray. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, fill her with your spirit, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we declare the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, there is victory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus praise one more time. Hallelujah. I just want to let you know there's a spiritual battle that happens. This is not just a symbol. This is, this is darkness and light going at it. And we understand that Jesus has already won. And these are people getting set free and filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, we plan to baptize five people today, but we have one more that came and said, I believe today is my day and I wanna, I wanna be baptized. Eureka, can I ask you why you wanna get baptized? This is the next step in my journey of trying to become closer to the Lord. Say it one more time. This is the next step in her journey in becoming closer to Jesus. She feels this is her day. Come on. believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes, sir. Do you renounce the ways of the world, the ways of sin, and the ways of Satan? Yes, sir. Based on your confession, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, we break off every bondage of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. We break every bondage right now. We declare Victory in Jesus' name. Victory in Jesus' name. Fill her with your spirit, God. Baptize her right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Fill her with your spirit. Fill her with your righteousness. Fill her with your victory and joy. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give Jesus praise one more time. Let's worship Him. Hallelujah. shout of praise in this place come on he is risen come on we thank you jesus come on we thank you jesus that you're in the business of taking people from the darkness to the glorious light we thank you god that you're resurrected from the dead we thank you jesus that you're alive and that you're real and that you broke darkness you can stamp sin you took it to the grave and we just praise you in this place so on the count of three, let's give him one last shout of praise. Come on, can you give him an Easter praise this morning? One, two, three, Jesus! We thank you, Lord! <laughs> I don't know about you, but baptisms are one of my favorite things <laughs> he's so good come on Jesus is so good <laughs> he's so good has he been so good for you he is risen he is risen <laughs> yes indeed <laughs> welcome to Vision Church and happy Easter <laughs> come on one more shout of praise one more Hand clap for Jesus. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that I can come to a place where I can just worship a Lord with all of my heart, all of my mind, all of my soul, all of my strength. It's not about emotion. It's about a fervent love for Jesus Christ. <laughs> so welcome once again. This is your first time here. Turn around to someone, give them a big handshake, a high five, and tell them you love them. Welcome to Easter.
All right. Good morning. You all look so wonderful this morning. I love to see all the Easter outfits. And yeah, just welcome to Vision Church. We're going to transition to this. This is our amazing time of of giving here at Vision Church. We don't pass buckets, so if this is your first time here, if you're just a guest, um, this is not for you to have to respond to this, but this is our time where we get to give out of our thankfulness to God. So there's multiple ways that we can give here on the screen, and I'm going to just pray over our offerings and tithes today. So if you could, just bow your head with me and as we pray and uh, worship God out of the generosity of our hearts. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that we get to give. We thank you, Father, for that you give to us, Lord. We thank you that you're Jehovah Jireh, that you're provider. We put our trust in you more than we would ever put it in man, God. And I just ask right now that you bless everyone in this room. Bless their homes. Just cover their homes under your blood, Jesus. Cover their their families under your blood, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We love you and we praise you. And the whole church says... Amen. All right. At this time, if you could, just pay attention to the screen. Just fix your eyes on the screen. we got a short video for you. Come on, one more time. Give Jesus praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Wasn't that amazing? Witnessing people getting set free, filled with the Spirit. Never gets old. This is a miracle in front of us. Amen? This is a miracle in front of us. I do want to say... Um, if you realize you need to get baptized, if you want to take that next step, you can sign up online as well. We'll be having another baptism here, I believe, in the next, uh, in a month or so, and we'll let you know when that happens. But turn to somebody and say, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. If we haven't met, my name is Boris, and I get to be the pastor of this church, and we just celebrated four years of Vision Church in January. Four years of God's faithfulness, amen? And it's amazing to see the faithfulness of God. That's four years of people encountering the Lord, people getting saved and baptized. And and, uh, church, can we welcome those people that are here for the very first time today at Vision Church? We're so glad that you made it. So glad that you're here. Somebody said that we have a lot of COs here today, CEOs. Don't raise your hand. I think it represents... Christmas Easter only people. I'm not going to put you on the spot, okay? I'm just, I'm glad that you came. We got all of our COs in the house as well. Praise the Lord. And those that are watching us online, so glad that, you, that you're joining us as well. And God bless you as you um, celebrate with us today the greatest event in history. Amen. Somebody said, the resurrection is the single most significant event in the history of the world. And it confirms so many other prophecies and promises. Because if it wasn't for the resurrection, then our faith, the Bible says, would have been futile, void. It would have been nonsense. But because Jesus was resurrected, it validates everything that he's spoken. It validates everything that the Bible speaks about him. It validates every promise, every prophecy in the Bible because he has been resurrected. Amen. Jesus is alive, and it's a big deal for us. And uh, if you've never been to Vision Church, uh, here at Vision Church, we believe every word of the Bible. The Bible says it's, it's God-breathed. It's inspired by God, every word of the Bible. We believe the Bible today, amen? And contrary to what the world believes about Christianity and the Bible, we remain, we're going to continue to be a people that believe every word that's written is for today. Who's ready to begin? Who's ready to hear from the Bible? Hallelujah. So I have, I have several scriptures today, and um, uh, the way it goes is I'll read uh, scriptures. I'll give you several points. Uh, I'll give you a lot more scriptures then. We'll ask the Lord to open our hearts to receive everything. Who knows that this, this is spiritual food for us as believers? This is spiritual food. And as believers, I believe one of the greatest signs of health is hunger. And uh, I believe whenever, whenever you feel a spiritual hunger, that means you're healthy. And so we're, we are um, going to continue to be the hungriest church in the city. Amen? Can we be the hungriest people for the Word of God that this city even knows? So Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 6. 
I'm going to start with the story of the resurrection. Uh, this is a story that's written in all four Gospels, and um, it has different viewpoints as well, but I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 through 6. It says, After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake. Everybody say, violent earthquake. For the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of, of him that they shook and became like dead men. A couple of things. First of all, I've never seen lightning or clothes like lightning. I can't wait to get to heaven and see just lightning stand, and stand still. You ever think about that? The second thing, is it says that the angel turned to Mary and Mary, and he said, do not be afraid. Probably turned to the guards, and this is my imagination, but he probably said, you, you guys continue to shake and tremble. But Mary, you don't be afraid. I'm pretty sure the guards were doing more than just shaking and trembling. The Bible says they fell like dead men. And the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, it says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Everybody say, raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God, in God. Let's just bow our heads and I want to just pray for us. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is the bread of life. You are the bread of life. And I pray, Lord, that you would multiply this, this word today. Holy Spirit, would you speak to our hearts? Would you give us deeper revelation of who you are and of the resurrection power of Jesus? We ask, Lord, for your anointing and your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, this is the greatest celebration. And, um, you know, since the church existed, since the church was born, and the church was actually born because of the resurrection, the church was born because of the resurrection, many tried to cancel the church or cancel Christianity. And you know what's interesting is that we're living in a time and a day right now where, where we're starting to feel opposition. And by no means uh, we're not getting persecuted as, 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 a, as a faith or as a church like other nations and other people groups around the world who's happy that we're living in freedom and that we have the freedom to worship Him today. Come on, we, there's a reason to rejoice. But it's interesting that I, I still believe that the enemy, if it was up to him, he would have canceled the church and he would have canceled Christianity and he would have canceled uh, Easter, believe it or not. Yesterday, somebody sent me a post that um, even uh, the leaders of our White House, the president, uh, he said today, instead of e celebrating Easter, today we're going to be uh, observing a, a day of transgender visibility. And... The, I think the, 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 the righteous effect that happens in our heart is that we should be offended a little bit. It should stir our hearts a little bit. But you know, another side and another perspective comes to me is that for 2,000 years since the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there has been so many kings and, and rulers that have been trying to go against Christianity saying that we will wipe off the last Christian from the face of the earth. But can I tell you the greatest evidence that Jesus was resurrected is that the church continues to advance. The church continues to take a stand. And even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst of opposition, the church will continue to stand for the truth, declaring that Jesus Christ was written, risen. Amen? And so that's what we believe as a church. And so, friends, I believe the greatest victory has already been won. And so we don't live a life from defeat, we live a life from victory, from victory. You know, there's, there's many proofs um, 
in the Bible that Jesus Christ has truly been risen. And I believe that's one of the greatest factors of, of why we're believers today. One of the uh, things in the Bible that has the greatest evidence is the fact that Jesus Christ has been risen. Um, we see it in Scripture, even in Acts, uh, multiple cases in Acts, and I'm going to read these verses right now, and in 1 Corinthians, that Jesus, when he was resurrected, he actually showed up to his disciples. He came to his disciples and he proved himself. The Bible says in Acts Chapter 1, verse 3, it says, After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs. Everybody say convincing proofs. That he was alive, he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 10, verse 41, it says, He, has not seen, he, he was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God has already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him, after he rose from the dead. It's in interesting that it actually says that they ate and drank with him. And I believe Jesus did that to prove that he is, he's risen. He's risen. It's interesting, these phrases, and he gave convincing proofs. And, and he showed them by eating and drinking. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, For what I received, I have passed on to you as first importance. Everybody say first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he, ha he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living today, though some have fallen asleep. You know, I believe Jesus made a point, and the Bible makes a point for us living today, that there was multiple accounts of people that witnessed him after the resurrection. This was not just at the time of Jesus' life, it was after the resurrection, and there has been multiple accounts of people writing about these encounters with Jesus after he was resurrected. And in these 40 days that Jesus was on earth after the resurrection, he would, he would show himself to different people. Just to put it in perspective, uh, they say that, that uh, nobody argues that Aristotle and Plato and, and Socrates uh, were alive and, and were real people. Nobody argues that point. And there's only like two accounts for each one of them, two genuine, authentic accounts that, that history can look back on and say, no, these were real people. There are hundreds of accounts when it comes down to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hundreds of accounts that speak about that Jesus was truly risen and that he, he uh, ascended into heaven. And so today we have, we have proof that Jesus, we're not just believing in vain, that we're not just believing a, a tradition, we're not just believing a religion, no, no, we're believing uh, that Jesus is alive today and that he still shows up to his disciples, who believes that today? He still shows up to his disciples, come on. You know, there's the battle of, against the deity of Christ today and we understand that there is an opposition, um, people don't, don't argue with the uh, existence of other good men and and people don't argue uh, even about Jesus being a prophet or a good person or a healer or a rabbi, but the moment you mention that Jesus is God or the, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, all of a sudden people become offended that he is the only way to God. All, people start having these questions and start saying, but I believe in this and my truth is this. And, and today because Jesus was resurrected, we understand that there is an ultimate truth and there is a truth that we cannot argue with amen and so because of this the church will continue to advance and the bible says the gates of hell shall not overcome the church hallelujah you know one of these accounts uh, of people that uh, set out to disprove christianity is a man by the name of lee strobel and uh, this is a man that's still alive today he actually was an atheist uh in the beginning of his life and and when he got married, uh, his wife was a believer, and he started studying and making a ca case against Christ. And when he got to the resurrection, he realized that it is impossible for Jesus not to be a real human. And if, if Jesus said who he said he is, then it's worth serving that kind of a Jesus, and he gave his life to the Lord. And, and I want you just to look up, uh, 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 
put your eyes on the screen is what I meant to say. And uh, we're going to watch a short video about his testimony. long time to develop in the ancient world. But what I learned is that we have preserved for us a creed of the earliest Christian church, a creed that is a eyewitness-based report of the resurrection of Jesus. Now, this creed has been dated back by scholars to within months of the death of Jesus, within months. That is historical gold. So we've got a news flash from ancient history on the resurrection. Third category of evidence is the empty tomb. And the best evidence for that is even the opponents of Jesus implicitly admitted the tomb was empty. Because when the disciples began proclaiming that Jesus had risen, what the opponents said was, oh, well, um, the disciples stole the body. Now they're conceding the tomb's empty, they're just trying to explain how it got empty. So everybody's conceding the tomb was empty. How did it get empty is really the issue. And that goes to the fourth category of evidence, which is eyewitnesses. You know, for most of what we know about ancient history, it comes from one or maybe two sources of information. And yet for the conviction of the disciples that they encountered the resurrected Jesus, we have no fewer than nine ancient sources inside and outside the New Testament, confirming and corroborating the, the conviction of the disciples that they encountered the risen Christ. That is an avalanche of historical data. So you put all that together and you have a really good case for Easter. Hallelujah. And we understand that this is only one account of a person that set out to disprove Christianity and ended up in, uh, accepting Jesus as his Lord and Savior. He now wrote a book called Case for Christ. Not Case Against Christ, Case for Christ. So what do we do with this? What do we do now that we know the resurrection has been pro proven, it's real, there's evidence for it? What does it mean for us today as believers? So what the resurrection really means for us, I wrote down four things, is number one is it gives us living hope. It gives us living hope. Everybody say living hope. Living hope. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3, it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last days. I want you to see this, this, this word, living hope through the resurrection. Living hope through the resurrection. Because we are raised up with Christ, we have, we have this living hope that lives on the inside of us. In other words, we don't have to be afraid of what is of the unknown and what is yet to come. We don't, we're not afraid of this. You know that they say that every fear and anxiety is actually linked to the, stems from the fear of death. It stems from the fear of death. And today we understand that Jesus has overcome death. The Bible set, puts it this way, that death was swallowed up by life. And so we do not fear because, because we understand that death was already dealt with. And so when we receive this revelation, this is what the Bible says in, in Romans 8, 11, it says, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, turn to somebody and say, it's living in you who raised Christ from the dead, will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. 
No matter what the fear is, I know that some people, they struggle with fear, and it's a real thing. Fear is a tangible thing sometimes. You feel the spirit of fear. Sometimes it's just the fear of, of the unknown, the fear of, 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 of your health, of sickness. There's, there's a fear that lingers of you being alone all your life. There's a fear that begins to, to just linger as a spirit. When we receive the resurrection revelation and the power of Christ, all of a sudden, this, if we're not afraid of death, what else can we be afraid of? Come hell or high waters, we begin to live victoriously in Christ Jesus. Why? Because we know that this life is temporary, but heaven is for eternity. Amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 55 through 57, it says, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through, and no matter what you go through in life, we have victory because of this living hope. Everybody say, I receive the living hope today. The second thing is resurrection, it assures us of our salvation. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Let me explain that in, in, in easy terms. God made you alive in Christ. And he took that, that punishment and what you deserve, he took upon the cross. And watch this. In the moment that hell thought it was overcoming, in the moment that hell thought they were going to crucify the Lord of glory, they didn't realize that Jesus, when he spread his arms on the cross, he was declaring the greatest victory of all time and of all humanity. And the Bible says, and he made an embarrassment of them because when they realized that it was already too late, and other scripture says, if they would have known about this, if they would have known about the greatest victory and God's mystery to our salvation and to our uh, victory in Christ, if, God, if they would have realized this mystery beforehand, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. But now we have this victory because Jesus overcame on the cross. And so because of this, we have confidence of our salvation, not because of our own righteousness, because the Bible says, you fell short of your righteousness. You tried already, you've, you've already tried being a good person, you've put energy and effort to that, and you realize that, that you fall short every time. Even on your best day, the Bible says, you're a filthy, your, your righteousness is like a filthy rag. I almost said, you're a filthy rag. It kind of is like that, right? You feel like filthy rags on our best days sometimes. But the Bible says that because of Christ and His righteousness, we are made righteous in Him. He became sin for all so that we can be His righteousness. Isn't it amazing to, to know that we don't have to perform for salvation? Isn't it amazing to know that your name is written in the book of life? Isn't it amazing to know that if you were to die, you would, be, you would be in heaven with Christ forever and ever and ever, and we don't have to fear death? Isn't it amazing to know that we can have the joy of this salvation? Sometimes, I'm telling you, sometimes as believers, we've got to remind ourselves what we need to be joyful about, and it's the very elementary foundation of it is that I am saved and that my name is written in the book of life. Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, Don't, stop rejoicing that you have authority over demons and that you have the ability to, to lay hands on the sick and that they shall recover. recover. Sure, that's, that's, that's something to be joyful about. That's, these testimonies, they're great for us, but he says, this is what I want you to really truly find your source of your joy, is that your name is written in the book of life and that no one can erase it from the book of life. Can I get an amen today? So no matter how far you've gone, no matter how deep you are stuck in, in the miry clay today, in the mud, 
God loves you and Jesus did not come to condemn you. The Bible says he did not come to condemn the world. He came to save you from your sins. So if you feel like you're too far gone, the hope today is that Jesus wants to save you. That's what he came. That was his mission, is to save you from your issue, is to save you from the bondage of the enemy, is to save you from the chains of the enemy, the chains of sin. I'm going to move on. The third thing is, the Bible says, it empowers us to live for Christ. The Bible says, as Christ is and so are we. It's almost like Christ begins to live through us. Acts chapter 2, verse 32, 33, it says, and God has raised this Jesus to life. I want you to say, raise Jesus. And we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. This, this was in the moment where Peter was explaining the baptism of the Spirit or the, the outpouring of the Spirit. And he's saying it's because Jesus was resurrected. We would have not had the Holy Spirit if Jesus wasn't resurrected. But God's promise and God's purpose was to send his son so that not only would he walk on the earth for 33 years, but so that he would be crucified, buried, resurrected, and then that wasn't, the work wasn't done even then. The Bible says, so that the promise of the Holy Spirit would be given to you, so that the promise of the Holy Spirit would be poured out on you. This is how Ephesians 1.19 says, it says, I also pray that you will understand. And Apostle Paul is, is saying, I pray that you would understand this revelation. You are a believer, I know. You've been walking with the Lord, sure. But he says, I pray that you understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. So he's writing to believers and he said, now I want you to understand another revelation because of the resurrection of Jesus. There is a resurrection power. That same power that rose Jesus from the grave comes and lives on the inside of us. Corey Russell says, it is a miracle we don't explode. Having that kind of a power in, in, in our bodies, it is a miracle that we're still able to function. But I believe the moment that we receive this revelation of who we are and whose we are and who's on the inside of us, we begin to radiate this power from our life. I'm telling you, Christianity was never meant to be just a one day a week. Christianity was meant to be a people of God that are filled with the Spirit of God, that everywhere they go, it's radiating through their life and people experience it because of your walk with Jesus. And so he says, I pray that you understand this. It's not just about you being, trying to be a good person on a Sunday and looking your best. No, it's you walking it out every single day of your life and having this encounter with him. Come on, our goal at Vision Church is not for you to encounter him on a Sunday, which we're thankful that you come and encounter him on Sunday. Our goal is for you to start encountering him every single day of your life. That's where true Christianity starts act, being active in your life. It gets activated in your secret place, in the place where you receive power. This is what I wrote, Easter is not about celebrating the resurrection, it's about experiencing the resurrection in your life. And the last thing is it transforms our perspective. It transforms our perspective. In other words, we begin to see through eyes of eternity. Many of us are seeing through eyes of the earthly realm, through the physical eyes. But the Bible says we have another set of eyes. Who knew that you had another set of eyes? It's located right here on your heart. And the Bible says that Apostle Paul prays and he says, I pray that these eyes get activated. They, they get opened or enlightened by this light so that you begin to see through a different, different view. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 through 3, and I started with this verse and it says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Everybody say it again. Raised with Christ. I want you to start walking in it. I want you to start receiving this as your identity. You've been raised with Christ. This is part of who you are now in Christ Jesus. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above. So it's, it's uh, 
your hearts on things above and your minds on things about, above. We understand that when we're saved, we are, our spirit is seated with Christ in heavenly places. And now it says, specifically, now I want your minds to know about this. So make sure your mind is renewed in this. This is why it's important to get the scripture on the inside of you. This is why it's important to continue growing in scripture and continue uh, speaking scripture and m memorizing scripture, making sure that you're thinking about scripture. Why? Because sometimes your mind forgets that your true identity is in Christ and you're in the heavenly places. And the only thing that stops us sometimes fulfilling the purpose of God in your, in your life is this battle that happens in the mind. And so it says, I want you to set your mind on this. You are raised with Christ in heavenly places. And so set your minds on things above and not on earthly things, for you died. Let me say that again. You died. You died and your life is now hidden with Christ. Wow. Easter Sunday. Let me remind you that you are dead. Your old you has passed away. Come on, you've already made that decision. We, we, today we witness people dying in, this, in, in these waters of baptism. We witness people dying. Sometimes we just have to understand that I don't exist anymore. It's not about me anymore. Forget about me. Sometimes we think we have some kind of entitlement. And the enemy tries to make sure that you, you, you still come to life once in a while. And he tries to keep you in this place of, of being a victim, of somebody told me something, somebody offended me, somebody, somebody spoke this over to me, and, 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 and we start walking around offended. And many believers today, even believers get offended. And many people stop co coming to church because somebody offended them. You know, you don't, you don't stop eating because you, got, you get poisoned at a, a food poisoning once at a restaurant. You don't stop eating because you get food poisoning uh, once in a while, but, but oftentimes we think that we can stop coming to church because, well, somebody offended me and I had some kind of food poisoning. Can I just tell you that wherever there's people, there's going to be hypocritical moments and, and there's going to be offense and there's going to be words and sometimes the, the enemy uses people to get to you. And I'm telling you, sometimes we think that it's, it's, that's the church. The church is filled with imperfect people. The church is a hospital. The church is people trying to just, just come one step closer to Jesus, and we're not perfect. And, and if you thought there was a perfect church, the moment you and I came into it, it stopped being perfect. But the Bible says this, that we are dead. We are dead men. The only way to activate this resurrection power is to become dead. We can't try to become good on our own. We can't try to, to, to have a behavior modification. You can't modify yourself to be like Christ. It says the only way to this is your, your death. You pick up your cross. Cross represents death. And you pick it up daily, the Bible says. And then you ask the Holy Spirit to activate His life on the inside of, of you. And the Bible says, it's not I that live anymore, but Christ that lives within me. And it's not, it's not about me, but, but I am raised with Christ in the heavenly places. So I'm going to renew my mind towards this. And Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 through 7, it says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly places. In order that in the coming ages He might show the incomparable riches of His grace expressed in the kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Can I tell you that we're living in these coming ages now? And he, the way that he shows his great kindness is through the body of Christ. And this is a call to us believers. We need to die so that we could be resurrected in Christ. We need to change our perspective because the resurrection is real. We need to change the way we see, not just in the earthly realm, we're seeing from the heavenly places, means we're above the situation. How do you know that you're above is oftentimes when you hear news of 
wars, rumors of wars, of wrong propaganda, of, of what's happening with, with, with society today, with economy, your heart's not worried. Why? Because you understand that we are big of a, uh, we're part of a bigger plan. You know, many people, they, once or twice a year, they think about eternity, but they think about their 401k and investments daily. Can I tell you that your 401k and your investments, and so, some of you are checking your crypto right now as we speak, all your investments, they're a maybe, they're not promised, and it's only for this lifetime, but eternity is for certain. Eternity is for certain. Your trials are momentarily, but they are so small in comparison to the glory that we will receive and we will experience in our glorified bodies. So the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Apostle Paul was dealing with a whole other doubt that about even resurrection. Is it possible for someone to be resurrected? If there is no resurrection, he goes on to say, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. So it says, honestly, if, if, if Jesus is not who he said he is, and if there is no resurrection. All this is a waste of time. You come into church on Easter, you dressing up. You guys look lovely today, by the way. Taking the extra time to go shopping for, for this service. You coming and, and getting out of your comfort zone and bringing your kids and all that. You might as well just go to the beach. You might as well just Watch us online. I'm just kidding. I love you guys watching us online. It says that it's all foolish and it's a waste of time and my preaching is a waste of time. But if, but if he got up out of that grave, if Christ has conquered death, if he conquered the grave, then he is who he says he is. And if Jesus is who he says he is, and if what is written about him is true, and if all this is actually active and, and, and reality for us today, then I'm telling you under the sound of my voice, there is nothing more meaningful and there is nothing more powerful. There is nothing more worthwhile that you could be doing in your entire life than going all in, in living your life for the glory of God. There is nothing more worthwhile than going all in for Christ. I'm telling you, this life is momentarily. It all passes. The Bible says it's like grass that comes up and withers away. Like a flower that blossoms and, and disappears. Like mist that you see in one moment and you, you stop seeing. But eternity, but the life of Christ, but the resurrection power... That's for us today. Romans chapter 8, 31, 32 says, What then shall we say in response to all these things? If God is for us, say God is for us. Who could be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? I love that. It says he's not going to just give you something. He's not going to just give you a little bit. He's going to graciously. How, he, how can he not graciously give you all things? Everything that you're worried about. Everything that you're going through. Everything that you're facing. God had a plan to give you all things that you need for this life. But it starts with the resurrection power coming on the inside of us. I want us all to stand up all over this place. If I can invite the worship team right now. I want to let you know the reason why I gave you the proofs in the beginning is because I believe the church needs to know how to give an account for their faith and for the resurrection power of Jesus. Can I tell you that you could be a witness as well of this resurrection power? 
I believe if you're sick today in your body, you could be healed today because of the resurrection power. If you are tormented in your mind, you could be delivered because Jesus rose from the dead. If you are bound with chains of addictions and fear and anxiety, I have good news for you that you could be set free right now because Jesus rose from the dead. And your sins can be washed away because Jesus rose from the dead. Can I tell you that you don't need to wait until you die to have eternal life. You could have eternal life today because Jesus rose from the dead. Because Jesus rose from the dead. The Bible says, one more, one last verse, John chapter 20, verse 22, it says, and after his resurrection, he, he turned to his disciples and he breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin, your sins are forgiven. And the Bible says, it's interesting, but, but it says that he, he turns to them and he says, this breath of life that you were missing, the breath that Adam received from the beginning, the resurrection power of Christ made it possible for you to receive the Holy Spirit again. Some of us are just in need of, of just a fresh breath from God. You're in need of a fresh breath from God this morning. And we're going to pray right now for, we're going to pray for healing and we're going to pray for chains to be broken. We're going to pray for all these things and we're going to worship Him for another few moments. But I want to leave the 99 right now and I want to just even turn to, to, to the one. If you're here today and you're, and you're realizing you need this relationship with Christ, you need the resurrection power of Christ. Maybe you've been experiencing fear and anxiety and you've been, you've been stuck in, in, in these, these areas of addictions and sin. I want to remind you again that Jesus did not come to condemn you. He did not come to condemn the world, the Bible says. He came to save you. He came to save you. He came to save you and resurrect you. The Bible says if you want to be my disciple, you must, you must pick up your cross. You must first de- deny yourself. Deny yourself. Be willing to deny yourself and then pick up your cross and follow me. And follow me. So right now, can we just all close our eyes at this moment? If that's you this morning, if you you want your life to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, oftentimes you know it because you hear a knock on your heart. You feel a stirring in your spirit. The Holy Spirit's already been speaking to you. Right now, just eyes closed. Can you just raise, raise your hand? Can you just raise your hand? I see hands risen. Come on, I'm going to wait for a few more moments. Raise your hand. Okay, now I want you to take a step of faith, and I want you to come to the front as we worship right now. I want you to come out of, out of your seat and just come to the front and meet me here at the front as we pray for you. And also, if, you're, if you brought someone to church, I want you to ask them right now. Come on, give it up to those that are coming. I want you to ask them right now. Ask them, do you need to be up there? If you brought someone to church, if you, it, it, just everybody right now, ask, ask the person next to you, do you need to be up there? Do you need to come up? And if they say yes, I want you to take them by the hand and I want you to come up, up front as well. Take him by the hand and come meet me up front. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says there's a celebration in heaven. There's celebration in heaven of one person giving their life to the Lord. There is this celebration in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Can I ask the prayer team to come up and and meet us up front as well? Here on the prayer team, prayer ministry team. I want to ask you to come. There's a celebration in heaven. Hallelujah. Come on, they're still coming. Hallelujah. Come on, church, can we pray with them right now? Those of you that came up, I want to tell you there's a new life in Christ Jesus. There's a new life in Christ Jesus. And this is a celebration for you today. He's given you a gift of salvation. And this gift is for you today. So right now, I want everyone to support them in this prayer. Can we just say this together? If you came up, I want you to repeat after me. 
say, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross for my sins. And I ask forgiveness for every wrong thing in my life. And I surrender my life fully to the Lordship of Jesus. I close all doors to the enemy. And say this together, I receive the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Come on, just stay up here right now. I want to... If you're on the prayer team, I want you to just surround them and pray over them. But as, as a church, just stretch your hands towards them and let's worship the Lord together. for anyone that needs prayer. Maybe you're going through just a battle in your life. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe it's a physical healing. Maybe it's a mental struggle. Whatever it is, I believe there's the power of resurrection here today and it's present here. We even witnessed it today in baptism. God wants to set you free. God wants to transform your life. If you're here and you're just, you just need this resurrection power on the inside of you, you need just to, your eyes to be open again, maybe. I want to invite you to come forward. Our, our prayer ministry team is ready to bless you and to pray for you. I want to read this scripture over you right now. This is, this is a quote from one of the greatest people of all times, from the greatest person of all time, Jesus. He says, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and of Hades. 
Come on, if you believe that over your life right now, I want you to receive that. He says, I have overcome the grave. I have overcome death. I hold the keys. And so because of that, we have victory today in Christ Jesus. If you still need prayer for anything, uh, I want to invite you forward. Our prayer team is ready to minister to you. And uh, we're going to just uh, worship for just a few more moments. Come on, let's give him everything we have. Can we do that today? Can we just celebrate the resurrection of Jesus? I want you just right now to shout in these songs of praises that we're going to be singing next. I don't even know the song that we're going to be singing, but I know there's, there's a shout in you today. I want you to celebrate that, that there's a victory in your heart. Let the victory come on the inside of you today. Let it come on the inside of you. Wandering into the night Wanting a place to hide This weary soul This bag of bones I try with all my might But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A bag of bones And just when I ran out of the road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not alone. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because he healed my choice but to believe my doubts will burn hey. like ashes in the wind so so long to my old friends burden and bitterness you just can keep it moving nah you're not welcome here from now till I walk streets of gold I'll sing of how you saved my soul. His wayward son has found his way back home. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. Because he healed my heart. He changed my name. Forever free. I'm not the same. I thank Master, I thank Savior, I thank God. Hey. Oh, I thank God. Hey, hey. Oh, I thank God. Woo. Come on, let's sing this out. Hell lost another one. I am free. Woo. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am. Are you free? I am free. Hey! I am free. Hell lost another one.
he healed my heart he changed my day forever free i'm not the same i thank the master i thank the savior i thank god hey 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 i thank god hey 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 i thank god hey oh i thank god hey get up get up get up get up out of that grave get up get up get up Get up out of that grave, come on now. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Come on. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Because you picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. Because you healed my heart. He changed my day. Forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the Savior. I thank God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Christ is risen. For those of you that accepted Jesus into your life today, I want to give you just a couple of next steps. First one is, let us know how uh, that you gave your life to Jesus so that we can stay connected to you uh, by texting to the number that's going to be put up on the screen here in a second. Text the name Jesus to that number, and we'll be sure to, to make sure that you're connected to someone that can walk with you, that can give you the resources that you need as well. And the second thing is stop by our Connect Corner and let them know we have a, a special book for you and we have a Bible if you need one. Uh, we want to make sure that you're equipped to, to, to take your next step after Jesus. And uh, after this last prayer, I want to just bless you guys right now. But we will have uh, refreshments in the hallway as well. And if you're here for the first time, be sure to stop by our Connect Corner. We have actually free coffee for you. We have a, 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 a coffee cart that's sponsored by, by Vital Brew, and uh, we have a free coffee there for you as well. But I want to bless you right now. If you could just hold out your hands like you're receiving something. Lord, I thank you for your people, God. We thank you, Lord, for the resurrection power. And we say, Lord, would you give us everything that heaven has to offer? I pray, Lord, that you would refresh hearts today, refresh our soul and our spirit like you've already done. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to encounter us every single day of our life. And we say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, one more time. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, God bless you, and be sure to stop by the Connect Corner.